Lecture two is talking about oxygen. Where is oxygen found in the body? Oxygen is found all over the body, dissolved in fluid in the blood, as well as fluid in and outside the cells. However, within blood, oxygen is mainly carried by hemoglobin molecules in the red blood cells. How does hemoglobin pick up and carry oxygen? In the blood flowing through the lungs, hemoglobin molecules bind avidly to oxygen. As long as the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood is above 60 millimeters mercury, the hemoglobin saturation will be more than 90 percent. In the tissues of the rest of the body, the partial pressure of oxygen is low, as the oxygen has already been used up by the cells. In this case, the hemoglobin will readily release the oxygen to the tissues. Can you explain the oxygen contents of blood? This equation summarizes how oxygen is carried in blood. CO2 refers to total oxygen content per 100 ml of blood. Oxygen is carried both in the bound form and in the dissolved form. Why does the oxygen saturation matter more than the oxygen partial pressure? According to the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, if the pH is normal, if the SpO2 is 90%, the partial pressure oxygen is 60. And if we take a hypothetical case of a patient with a hemoglobin of 10 grams per deciliter, we can calculate that the bound oxygen will be equal to 1.34 times 10 times 0 0.9, and that is equal to 12.06. Conversely, the dissolved amount is only 0 0.003 times 60, and that is only 0 0.18. So 0 0.18 is negligible compared to 12.06. Therefore, at atmospheric pressure, the oxygen saturation matters much more than the oxygen partial pressure. If the SpO2 has dropped a little, but it's still above 90%, should I be alarmed? If we look at the equation, we will see that the bound entity would be 0 0.9 if SpO2 is 90%, 0 0.93 if it's 93% or 0 0.95 if it's 95%. And therefore, the total concentration or content of oxygen will not change very much with a small change in SpO2. As such, you should not be alarmed. However, you should be concerned because something has changed in the patient that led to the drop in SpO2. So you should calmly look for the cause for the drop in SpO2. How does oxygen partial pressure vary between atmosphere and the body? Using units of millimeters mercury, we find that the partial pressure of oxygen in atmospheric air is usually about 150 millimeters mercury. It drops to about 100 in the alveolus inside the lungs and it drops further to about 80 to 90 in the blood. Can you explain why the oxygen partial pressure of inhaled air drops upon reaching the lung air sacs? When the air enters from the atmosphere into the lungs, there is carbon dioxide inside the lung air sacs. And depending on how much breathing is happening, the carbon dioxide crowds out the oxygen and therefore the oxygen partial pressure drops from 150 to 100. In healthy individuals, the difference in partial pressure oxygen between the alveolar air and the blood is minimal. And this accounts for the small difference of between about 100 to about 90. Then, as the blood flows from the arteries to the capillaries, the partial pressure drops and the red blood cells and the hemoglobin will re actively release the oxygen to the tissues to be used. Some organs in the body, for example, the brain, the kidneys and the liver, are always actively using oxygen. Other organs like the bone and skin and cartilage may use oxygen less. As such, when blood flows throughout the whole body, some oxygen is taken up by the active organs and there is also remnant oxygen that is remaining in the blood. This explains why venous blood has a higher partial pressure of oxygen compared to the cell mitochondria. What information does SpO2 number give me? 
The SpO2 is the saturation given by the pulse oximeter reading, and this is affected by several factors. Firstly, the finger blood flow, which is also affected by finger temperature. Secondly, all the gas exchange processes happening in the lungs. Thirdly, the carbon dioxide level in the lung air sacs, which in turn is affected by the size and number of breaths taken per minute. And lastly, the partial pressure of oxygen in the inhaled air. So, why do we monitor SpO2 at home? If the patient is breathing room air, a normal SpO2 would indicate that there is a normal gas exchange in the lungs and that the patient is breathing or ventilating normally. That means moving the correct amount of air in and out of the body. As such, a normal SpO2 is reassuring. Whenever we see a low SpO2, we must think about whether the process is due to a problem in the lungs, for example, due to infection, a problem in the airways, for example, due to mucus, or a problem due to ventilatory movements, such as due to muscle weakness.